Yes. If you, look, you get a username and a password, I'm sure you have one already. Yes. Okay. When you log in on the top there, you can click on your name and you can change your password if you want to. The password is, it needs to be more than eight letters, figures, and a capital in between. Okay. okay. So then you, uh, normally, if uh, the administrator didn't change your settings, you should start on this calendar. I don't know if you currently start on this calendar. Uh, if we started on this calendar, if you log into Q2B, do you start on this calendar? Yes, I do. Okay. All right. So what this calendar does, if I use the single person, it goes month to month. It shows all your um, reservations on here, and he's also set it up to show the rooms that's booked on here. Okay, you can also go year to year. So then it changes to 2024. If I want to go back to 2023, I can just use this um, double cursor that goes back. Okay. okay. You can see it in month view. This is a month view. You can also see it in week view, and you can also see it in day view. The only difference between this is if I click on this date, the booking will start on the date that I've clicked. And I can start the booking from there. If I made it by mistake or clicked by mistake, I can just exit. Okay. In week and day view, I've got the opportunity to say they're going to start. Let's say it's a conference from that time, exactly to that time where they're going to end. And the booking will start 10 to 5 on the day. Okay. 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 So let's first do a um, demo on or a test booking um, okay. for Q2B for the training. And I'm going to start and I'm going to say Q2B conference and in brackets just training so that they know when we deleted why we did this. So okay. you can drag and drop if you want to change the time. You can click there on the date. Click on the little clock, and let's say they're going to start from nine. You can change it there. You can type any event description, like Yanni and Sonny's wedding celebration, Indrid's birthday celebration, conference name, etc. That's the event description. The coordinator, who's the coordinator? Let's say it yourself. You can type your own name in there. You can use the function sheets. I don't know if Tony set it up properly, but in the administrative training, we'll manage that. And okay. I can show you how could, you can do um, changes to the function sheets. So I'm going to choose the weddings one. I see it doesn't have a conference one, so I'm just going to choose the weddings one for training purposes. Okay. Then, what is the status? Do I want to make a quote, an invoice, or a pro forma currently, or just an inquiry, or I want to put it on the wait list? Oh, so there's all the statuses you can manage in Q2B. Okay. So let's do a quote for now. Then you have to break down your revenue. So where's this revenue going towards? Conference. That revenue groups, you will also be able to change them in um, the venue setup once we get there. Okay. Okay. Then you can select the origin. Where is this booking coming from? Let's say Facebook. Then you, then you can leave an internal note in here. You can also paste the full email in here from the customer. So let's okay. just make a note in here. So you don't run out of space? No, I mean, you can do put a Bible in there and it will accept the Bible. Oh, nice. Wonderful. Right, let's say 50 guests. They can type in the guests there. And then when I click save, it will force you to give the customer details. And we force an email on you. If you don't have an email for the customer, if the customer has been with you before, like myself, 
you can just click on the email and it will autofill all the information. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to have to type the first name and the last name in there for the customer. Now only it will accept your booking. And you'll see now I've got a header, the customer details, and I've got line items that I can add to the quote now. Yes. Okay. So, um, I'm not going to do group. I'll do group with you afterwards on this booking. So he's currently got um, a, a no deposit, or if you say for my conference, I want a percentage deposit, a 50%, you can change it in the um, booking. That's also a setting in the venue setup that I can see now he's made a mistake. You cannot do it that way that he's set it up. Okay. Oh, okay. If I want to change the conference and I say percentage, 50% deposit required, it will immediately update the booking on the invoice or the quote with a 50% required. Okay. Then we're going to get to a customer note, prints on quote and invoice. So whatever you type in this block will print on the quote or the invoice. Okay. Right. And you For can type. C. Yeah, you can type in anything here. Please confirm your menu. Anything that you want to type in there. Okay. As soon as I work in the header and I change something, you see I go and I, uh, I save all the time because yes. you're working online in the server. So just get to the habit to just click save so yes. that the server save what you've done. Yes, I've done that already. I learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good. So now the document is empty because there's no line items added to this quote yet. So I'm going to go to customer details first. It's now in my private capacity is in red. If I want to put it under a company, if you cannot find a company here, the current company, see, we are already there. So you can add it in there and now it will add all the company details that's set up in the company um, details. It will add that to the header of the um, quote. Okay. okay. If I click on more here, you can still capture Henry's personal details in here. For a wedding, we've got date of anniversary, so you can select the wedding date, and the system will, can then automatically send a happy anniversary to them every year. Oh, that's great. That's super yeah. sweet. So we'll get into that uh, as we go along. I'll show you how you can use that. Okay, so now the invoice will be in the company name. Um, you don't have to capture the uh, date of birth. You can also use the check-in apps, which you're currently not using. And then the customer will capture their own date of birth. And the system can also send them a happy birthday every year. Now, let's say, for instance, I asked you to always CC my accounts department. Yes. You can type in a CC here, or it's maybe a bride and a groom. You can type in a CC email. Everything that you're going to send to this person, the CC email will also receive it. Okay. 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 I go and save, and now I'm going to add line items. So from your price list, these are all items on your price list. Okay. And the price list can only be managed by the uh, administrator, I think, which is currently um, Tony. So give me a few examples. Do you have a full day conference? Oh. So um, what do you call it? Let's say conference. No. We have our Bogan Villa, which is our conference room. Okay, so don't you have a full day conference package or? I don't think it's been put on here yet. Because oh. I don't deal with the conferences because Tony is busy with them actually. <laughs> yeah, because there's nothing set up that. here. Okay, so let's just use. He manually puts everything in. Mm. Very silly, you don't have to do it. But anyway, full day conference. I'm going to do it manually. So you can either select it from the price list item. If it's not there, you can manually add an item here. 
So that's why I was hoping Tony was going to join because he also needs a lot of training still because I can see errors that he's doing on the system already. Okay, so full day conference per person. Now, I, if you type it in, you can say add it to the price list and it will automatically add it to the price list. You can type the package in there and you can say set up um, tables, chairs, waiter, what's all included. I've done a conference many years ago. So let's say months. You can say D breaks and snacks, um, buffet lunch, one soft drink per person. So you can type in your full package in here. Of course, if you select it from the price list, it's already in there, then you don't have to do this. Okay. So let's say 50 and let's say, for instance, it's 450. Um, a person and then it will ask you here which department you see it doesn't even have departments yet so I don't know how you guys run that place to be honest be so honest. this yeah this revenue should now actually go to a department where you can pull your revenue report and you can see oh my conference is made so much for the month Okay, so department means like conference or wedding or... Yeah, or food and beverage or out of this package, uh, 100 rands going to food and beverage, 100 rands going to venue hire, 100 rands is going to operations out of this 450 per person. Okay. Right. So there's my package now added. Then let's add miscellaneous items from his... Uh, which venue do you use for the um, uh, the Bogan Villa? That one. There we go. Yes. So you see already it should say venue hire Bogan Villa and now it books out the Bogan Villa. So there's a lot of problems on your system. I'm not going to mention it again, but you can't just have a description for a client Bogan Villa. You have okay. to have venue hire, Bogan Villa. Okay. Venue hire, Bogan Villa. So now it will automatically select the time that you've got it here in the top header. You can select a, a setup style, which is also not connected. Okay. One, and it's 6,000 Rand. Okay. And I say save. So now it's just going to say to the client, Bogan Villa. And I see he's also not got the... Uh, Can I change these things if I wanted to? Like in, in venue admin, yes. You're going to go through this training and you can go and please fix it all. Okay. Okay. So now you have to book the room out. So there's the resource, a room or activity. If it's not in that line, it's not booked out. So now I've booked out the room from nine to five. Okay. So you can add multiple items like this. Let's see if there's a breakfast that we can add. Let's say, for instance, they're going to do this royal breakfast as well. And it's for 50 people. Okay. So there's the breakfast. Um, let's take miscellaneous items from here. What else has he got in here? <laughs> let's say 50 tea and coffee that's an additional charge and so you can build on and build on and build on to the system onto the quote let's say you're going to add rooms let's just see if he's got rights in no see no right but not so let's go here and let's say uh, he's got no room rights. Uh, um, for uh, the queen, um, generally when, I okay, guess so not for the luxury tents, but for our 
honeymoon suite that's attached to the main reception and the two standard rooms that's also attached to the main reception. It's on. Can you go to create again? Rack right. Is it a rack right? No, um, if you go back and you go to um, click on create. OK, I'll go back there now. I, I just, just want to show you. I just want to fix something while I'm here. Not a problem. So if I go here now and I say save. You will see rack right is on the top there now. Yes. If I select it in there, it will automatically, if I add the rooms, automatically select the rack right that's set up for the rooms. Okay. But he's got no room right there. Right no, that's what we're doing. If you go to how, well, how I was taught, you go to create new and then you type in the Queen's chambers or whichever the sort and that would pop up and then you'd click on it and then you would say okay one two adults mm, no that, so there's no rights yeah there's no rights generated so now the system cannot pick up rights for the room um but it picks it up on the create new if you go yeah there. but then you have I, to I do know it. it's not supposed to be there but <laughs> yeah but then you have to do it manually so now i have to say no 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 is, go up the price list item okay and then type in queen it's the wrong way around okay so go all the way to the bottom there's queen's chambers <laughs> i know it's the wrong way i'm just showing you <laughs> yeah it's totally set, it's totally wrong you don't do it that way you are you guys are working your butts off i can tell you now yeah, I know. Um, I've been thinking of like, how can I learn the system so I can make it quickly, <laughs> so I can make the quotes faster for myself than like, because sometimes I have to make more than one quote because sometimes the customer doesn't know exactly what they would like. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how I've been taught. <laughs> I didn't even know about the ad, the rooms or anything. Yeah, it's totally wrong. And the way you work, it's totally wrong. Okay. Okay, it's probably how he works, <laughs> but that's not how we trained him to work. And he's created his own little setup here around it. Okay. But then you can add rooms. Minimum occupancy is two. Fantastic. So that's awesome. So there's the chamber now booked out. Um, and you also don't put this in the room name. That's in your terms and conditions. Okay. So your setup's got a lot of work. I'm sorry to mention it to you again. Well, I wouldn't know any difference. So I'm glad I have you to show mm. me difference. So, <laughs> so yes. you will you will normally generate um, rights for your rooms. And then you can just come here and you can add multiple rooms and it will pick up the right immediately in here. And then you don't have to do it manually. And you say create new. And now I'm giving those rooms away for free. <laughs> but I can now say it's from that day to that day. So you see the hard work I have to do now. Yes. So, so how do I go about changing that so I can use the ad rooms or does the admin need to do that? Yeah. In the administrative training, I'll show you how to generate rates and fix this. Okay. Okay. But he's totally set up wrong and he's using it wrong. Okay. So now I have to do this all the time where well, I don't, there was no necessary for me to book it. See, and it couldn't even, the system couldn't even see that the room was booked out because there's no rate in. Okay. So unfortunately, there's going to be a lot of work for you in the venue setup. Yeah, it seems like it. <laughs> to get it fixed. Okay. Standard room. So let's say they're going to stay until the 13th, only one night. And I didn't, wasn't necessary to type the right in, but for now we're going to do it. 
So there's the rooms booked out, your packages booked out, etc. But if you have rights in, you can automatically add them from here. Okay. okay. All your rooms available. Price list items, you can also add price list items from here. And you can say the same that we did there by create new. And you can search for multiple price list items. Um, let's say a dinner. Nothing for a dinner. I, so, I, I must be honest with you. I don't know how Tony gets out quotes with this. Okay. To be Let's, honest, I don't. I don't touch any of the. I don't touch the ad rooms. I don't touch the ad process items, and yeah. I don't touch the discount button. I just do everything from create new, and then <laughs> everything. And that's all I do. Like that's. Yeah. Well, that's how it was shown, and that's. Yeah. How, <laughs> but yeah, I, do, I don't touch any of those buttons until now. I've, I've actually realized. Okay, why are they there? Yeah. <laughs> so, you can add a. Um, uh, items from here as well from the price list and then you can also apply a discount so let's say there's no department in so it won't allow us to do that so departments are normally then you hire Food and beverage. Oh, what else will we need? Let's carry on with that booking. Oh. I don't even know how he does his reporting. Because if you don't have this in, I don't know how he does it. Seriously, I'm being very honest with you. So let's say, yeah, I want to apply a discount. Okay? It says to which department must I throw that discount? Let's say food and beverage, and I'm going to give them a 10% discount. It will calculate a 10% discount on the total booking. But if I go and I select now, where's my breakfast? Uh, that we keep breakfast. Yeah, there's the breakfast. And I select only that one line. It will only apply the 10% on the breakfast. And now I can make a line a description and I can say 10% breakfast um, or conference. Okay, so I've said to the client, I'll give him a 10% breakfast, and I say create new, and it will add a line to show the client 10% breakfast for conference, and there's the 10% on the breakfast, on that breakfast line. Okay. Okay. So you can use this for multiple things. So let's say for accommodation, you offer them a 5%, We'll calculate on that full, and I'm going to say now, accommodation discount. Oh, goodness. Can't type this type me in the afternoon. <laughs> okay, and now I want to mark some of the accommodation. I can say for that room, that room, and that room applied 5% discount. Create. And there's the 5% discount for the rooms. Okay, that's great. So now your document looks like this. So there's your details. There's all the customer details. Okay. And I can see you also captured it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Added the postal address in three times, okay, but we're not going to. And it says the event name, and it already stipulates to them on the rack rate. People also don't call it rack rate anymore. They call it room rate or room bed and breakfast rate or conference rate. 
Okay. okay. But you, it will make more sense after all the training. Okay. Okay. And there's my note that I added. And there's the full package in the system. There's the room that I booked out. So you see, for a customer, it would be better if you say venue hire, Bogan Villa, from that time to that time. Yes, instead of Not just like you've got it in, yeah. Okay. yeah. So there's the breakfast, tea and coffee. There's all the rooms that I booked out, the barman, and there's the discounts applied. It shows the 50% deposit required and the total of the invoice. Then he's got all of this, and this also I'll show you in the venue setup. This area here only allow for three or four bullet points. If you have so much to, for them to read, there's a footer note here where you can add it in. Otherwise, it moves your banking details at the bottom, and guests will keep on phoning you to say, where's your banking details, because they don't scroll down to the end. Okay. Okay. So in the venue setup, I'm going to show you how to change this so that in the please note, it's these few bullet points, and then this will be at your footer note, where he's got in here, we look forward to hosting you and your guests. All right. Okay. We'll fix all of that. Tony's not going to like us, but you can't keep on working like <laughs> this. It's actually horrible. The way you work currently. Yeah. Much yeah. easier way to work. So that's what your document looks like. Uh, right. Now, let's say, for instance, a client phones back and he says, I don't want that breakfast anymore, or I don't want the tea and coffee. Delete it and delete the barmans. Okay. A week later, he comes back and he says, Please reinstate those items for me. I want it again. Any of the items. You can go to the reservation list. Find his reservation. By typing any of these fields. Q2B conference, Q2B, my surname, um, the company name, and you will find the booking. Click on the booking ID. Show deleted. And it will show all the ones with the little arrows is deleted items. You want to charge him again for it and he wants it. You can just say restore. Yes. Restore. Yes. And then it will add the items back on the bookie. Okay. So for a room, there is a check in, but there's a much easier way on Q2B to check in where we use an app or QR code for the client. But this is the old way for people to check in. So you can check them in here, but you have to go to the booking, check them in, check them out. And there's the indemnity as well. You can print it out if you want to do it via paper, but there's an electronic check-in app where there's no paperwork. It saves all the check-in app. Everything from the check-in app, it saves it all on the system, so you don't have to print this um, indemnity. Okay. So if I want to edit something, let's say they're going to use this room from 8 o'clock. I can change it to 8 o'clock. And I say save, and now it's from 8. All right, let's see what he's done here. And I can say it's up to five. So I think our work is going to be a lot of work in the venue set. Yes. I can see problems that he's created, yeah. But, so you can edit lines, you can change the dates, you can change the guests, um, you can delete lines, restore the lines, you don't have to redo all of them again. Okay. Then I'm going to go through these functionalities and it's action print I showed you. Let's say you've got all your rooms on here and you just want to give the client a summary. You don't want to give them a six pager. We summarize it by categories, which he didn't set up. I can see that. Then we summarize it and it makes it a much shorter version of the full invoice. Okay. 
which I can also see it's not set up properly. Yeah. Then, um, if there's accommodation on this booking, it creates an accommodation voucher. Let's say it's a wedding coordinator. They want a voucher with everything that's booked out, but with no revenue. They don't want to display the revenue to the customer. You okay. can do a voucher for them. Okay, you don't have activities, so I'm not going to waste your time on activities. And then order throw. On the order throw, everything that we started doing on this booking, from the beginning to the end, gets captured. So who was the user? What day? What time? And what did they do? Okay. Every line item that I changed and worked on, it captures everything in here. Okay. So now that's on the order trail. Payments, I can also, let's say I want to capture a payment for this. I received the payment. I can click on this little credit card icon here. And I yeah. can say on this day, a EFT payment, and it was 10,000 Rand. And I can say the reference number for the proof of payment is this. If I want to mail the receipt to the customer and I click create, it will immediately mail the receipt to the customer and say, thank you for your payment, attach it to your receipt. Okay, that's so much easier. I was doing the whole had to go to payments, then going there, and then create, and then yeah. adding everything. And you can also print it. I'm not going to capture a false payment on your system now. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm, you can also print the receipt or mail the receipt or do both. Okay. Fine. So you can either capture it from here. You don't have refundable deposits. So I'm not going to waste your time showing that to you. Or you can go here, payments. I think that's the way you've been doing it. Yes, Action, create new. Put yes, that's out. the exact way. Okay, so that's the old way still. Oh, okay. It's much easier and quicker from the credit card icon. No, definitely. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, and then CRM, I don't know if he set it up yet, let me check. Yeah, so he's got a wedding profile, but nothing else yet. Okay. So, you can add a CRM note on this booking. From the booking, click on CRM, create new. And I'm going to just say training, you to be user but you can type in a note there follow up with client for outstanding amount you can paste the full note in here and you can say create then it will automatically add this note in the reporting okay and it will show in the reporting what's outstanding on this conference okay so is that a report that you have to draw or does it send yes. an email to you? Yeah, so you can check all your weddings, all your conferences, what's the status of it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. okay. So, guests works like this. So now I've got 50 guests here in this conference. You can mail them a registration link and they can use that link on the, for their clients or their guests or their delegates or wedding to send their, that link out on any wedding pl um, platform okay, or wedding invitation or whatever and it looks like this. So that you can either, they can use that link and that link. So this is um, normally what a bride will love and a conference person as well. I just want to log out and show you how they receive it. So mm -hmm. now you can offer them this links and it says we can manage your RSVPs for your event. Okay, it puts the event name in there and I can use this links 
in any platform via WhatsApp, wedding platforms, um, anything, and that we you can manage their RSVPs for them. Oh, no. So now I'm going to click here as a guest on the link, and then I receive it like this. Welcome to event registration, Riverside Castle. You're invited to conference tra for training from this date to that date. That's the organizer, and there's your website. So now I'm going to say I'm Susan. What the? My email is susan at nomail.com. My telephone number L eight two eight five nine five five nine five and we're going to be one guest and I'm a vegetarian. Okay? And then of course online we always have to ask them do they want to receive marketing material. They say submit and then we just want thank you for registering for the conference. We're looking forward to serve you. Okay, so guest receives it very smooth the RSVP, and it's something you can offer um, with your conference packages and also your wedding packages. Okay. Three RSVP maintenance or management. Mm -hmm. okay. The venues that use it, love it, because if we capture all 50 guests before they arrive, so it's more customer data for you, and also, you take a lot of load away from the bride or the conference organizer. Okay. So now if I go to guests, there's the son that RSVP. You can see all her notes. If she checks in with the indemnity, uh, the electronic indemnity check-in, you'll have her indemnity here signed and on the date that she signed it, yours is set up with blank. <laughs> You'll have all her questions and answers in here already. When she checked in, what did she answer? What did she select? But now you can offer that bride or the conference person this link. And without logging into Q2B or nothing, they can check their own RSVPs online. So they can see how many guests are coming to the conference. They can export it to Excel. They can upload more names and up type it in Excel and upload it and it updates in Q2B. Mm. Okay. Okay. So that's what you can also offer for your packages. So that is what that um, guests are for. Everybody that checked in, and if you have them on the electronic indemnity, you'll have all their details in there. I checked in that one room that's got two guests, so that's why there's a count of three. So one for Susan online, RSVP, and I used the manual system here to check them in the room. So if I check them out now, it will warn me they still owe money and there is a little road to show that I've checked them out. Okay. 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 Okay, so that is what that guests are for. In feedback analysis, so 12 hours after departure, you can check the feedback and it doesn't have a lot here. Maybe you will be able to change that as well. And you could see those conference people, what did they rate you? Is it a one? Is it a five? Okay. So he's probably got them all linked under function. Okay. So if I rated you a one, it's horrible. Five is excellent. You will be able to see all those guests. You will be able to see all their ratings here and all their comments. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. I don't know if the system could do that. So we've been doing it by well, WhatsApp and sending them the uh, <laughs> Google link. And <laughs> yeah. So okay. I've selected the wedding um, function sheet now. So you can either complete it from here. It's not set up correctly, like you can see. In any admin, we're going to spend more time there. I'm going to show you how to set it up properly. 
but it's not set up properly here. Okay. So you can also send this to a client and they can complete it online. Now I have to complete it, but it's not set up right. Okay. So okay. what you can do is now I've selected it. You can mail it to the customer, mail function sheet. I'm going to lock out again to show you what it looks like. And it gets, they mail it and easily remove the link. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. It looks like I'm going to have to spend at least a week with you guys to sort out the problems created yeah i don't know how he how he's working like that i'm going to be honest with you if you just put that link back all thing We'll fix as we go along. Go. Okay. Sorry. See another problem here. Okay, now if I go back. And I mail that function sheet link to myself again. And I go mail function sheet. I'm going to log off. Okay, and I'm going to receive it now. Do you see the link in there now? Yes. Okay, so now a customer can click on this function sheet. There's the answers already in it. And now she can make changes. And you, she can add notes. Um, then non alcoholic. Uh, fifth, 40. Oh, alcohol. Okay. She can type a Bible in there. She can paste the menu. This is not set up correctly. Okay, so it looks horrible at the moment. You can see the numbers are not even following. So it yeah. is not right. Okay. But she okay. can now answer all of this online for you without you logging in or anything. And then she says submit. You can also say at the end here, um, if you can set up the function sheet with an expiry. So let's say seven or 14 days before the event. If she comes onto this link to change it again, it says you cannot make changes anymore. Please contact the venue to make changes. Okay. So this will allow her to keep on making changes. And I say now I want. I want 70 alcoholic welcoming drinks. Submit and it will update in Q2B. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know where it says um, welcome drinks or <laughs> um, welcome snacks? Do they see what we offer? You can, it should have everything on the function sheet if it's set up properly. Okay, because it's it's great saying welcome snacks, but then they don't know what we have. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, if the function sheets are set up properly, it should show that. But right. like you can see, it's not set up. I'm just using it. So now you will see all our answers updated in here. Without you doing anything else, you can now print the function sheet. Okay. And if it's set up properly, it will print better as well. It will have a date, a time, everything in here. So it's not set up correctly. And obviously it also have options on like what welcome drinks we have and all of that. Yeah. And the extended um, function sheet will show you all the questions and answers, all the packages, all the special notes. There's the full conference package already in what's included. Um, it will add all the items in that she's paid for. Okay. So, uh, I hope you're going to help him so that, that you can use this functionality. It's going to change your life completely. Yeah, I'm, I want to learn how to do everything right. Yeah. <laughs> right now, I've been taught, obviously, by them. So, what I yeah, know... Yeah, now you just them. have to get out of the, ba the bad habits of doing it incorrectly. Yes. If there was an event in here, you can print the ticket again Yeah. Now, let's say, for instance, it's a wedding or a conference, and they say now each person is going to pay their own rooms. You don't have to delete the line here and create a new invoice from scratch. You go to action, split. What do you want to split? Um, Let's say, for instance, I'm going to split this room to another invoice, or let's use this one, standard room. The person is going to pay for his own room. You say split, and it creates a new invoice with only the room on, and now I can update the information. It's not for the company. It's in my personal capacity. I don't want the CC there, and it's uh, invoice. I want the invoice for my room, blah, 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 and there's the one room on its own invoice now. But if I go to the reservation list now, you'll see. Now there's two invoices, the one with only the room on and the one. So let's say, for instance, now, I just want to copy this number. I'm lazy to type. Now the company says, no, it's okay. Or the wedding couple says, no, it's okay. We will pay for that room. You want to move this room back to the original invoice. You just go back to that invoice. You say split and move. Take this room, move it back to that booking number. Or you can search by customer name as well. And I say move it back, and there it's back on the original invoice. Okay. So splitting it gives it a new invoice as well, a new invoice yeah. number. Right. So now I moved it back to the original one, and this invoice will be now in a zero because there's no line items. Okay. And if I wanted to create more than one quote for the customer, because say they're interested in the fairy woods and um, the summer kitchen. You can, I... also, you can also do it on one and then split it into two if you want to later. So let's say you did it in one, and they so say now. So you can duplicate the quote. If so, like, do you have sorry? the same booking um, number? Well, the it, it can't same stay on the same booking number. As soon as you split it, it creates a new number for it. Okay, so there's no such thing as duplicating the same booking number or anything like that. You, you can't have do to it. start yeah. from scratch or change the actual quotes on its own. Yeah. Okay. Go. So that's what split and move is for. Because we do get those wedding parties, you put everything on a quote in the beginning, and then each guest book their own room, but they want their own invoice. Then you can split the rooms easily to new um, invoices. Yes. Or the bridal couple, the, the uh, bride's parents says, we'll pay for this, we'll pay for this, we'll pay for this. And the groom's um, parents will pay for that, pay for that, pay for that. 
then you can split it easily afterwards. Okay. 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 So that's split and move. Then also documents, very nice um, feature that you can use. So let's say this is a wedding or a conference. <laughs> you want to upload the seating arrangements, menu that they selected, or you want to the decor that she, um, you can take a photo on the day of when she visits the site of a decor, and then you want to upload it on a booking. Okay. Okay. So you can upload it here, proof of payments, etc. Or a ID, a copy of ID, or a menu, proof of payments, seating arrangements. So we can add to this. Yeah. Okay. That they send to us. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. Photo so, like, of the bridal you... couple, anything that you want to. Okay, say for instance, like say my computer crashes. Mm -hmm. or something happens along the lines when mm -hmm. i get my new computer and we reload everything on again will that keep uh, all the all, all documents yeah all these documents oh, are God. kept on a server that is brilliant <laughs> okay so okay. there i've added the copy of the id you can add a menu so let's say they send you back the selected menu Okay, you can say menu for me. Decor, they use it for cake pictures, set up pictures, you name it and you can use it. Okay. And all Just, this information is never lost, no matter ne what. Never lost. Practice. When you come back here and you say, what is this document again? What is the menu? Download it for me. It downloads it again. Okay. <laughs> That's and so now, cool because we've been using Dropbox. <laughs> oh no! Look on the look on the booking. It says there's two documents attached to this booking. Okay, that's brilliant. That's an awesome way to keep our stuff together and menu seating arrangements as well. Instead yeah. of making new files on Dropbox saying this client da da da, da it's mm. like on the client's details already on their quotes. Yes, that's really cool. Yes. So okay. photos, seating arrangement, decor, cake, couple, wedding couple, photo, uh, the program for the day, blah, blah, blah. You can upload everything on here and it keeps it on the system for you. Proof of payments, everything. That's brilliant. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's everything under action. Then we're going to go to mail. So if I mail, whatever the status is here, that's why I added that message back into the venue setup for inquiry. Because if I mail and there's no message in, they will get it blank. Okay. With no okay. message. So this is a quote now. I'm going to mail it to the customer. And there it goes. The system ticks it, the server delivered the quote. Then if I want to mail it with any attachment, so there's all the attachment he's currently got on. Okay, so you can also in the venue setup, you can um, change and update maybe all of this. And okay. whatever I, I select, can hold my control in and select multiple ones and send. Okay. So let me show you in my mailbox what it looks like. So there, I just mailed it. It will mail the function sheet for me. Um, it's an inquiry. There's my quotation attached already with his message. You can also see in the venue setup that I saw now when I logged in there, but we can fix it during training, all these spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay, It just creates a hell of a long email. You don't need all these spaces in between you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's all the attachment that are selected. I see. So you can mail the quote with all the different attachments that you wanted. Okay. Okay. So let's go back at ground. So that's what that one is for. The registration link I already showed you. That's the RSVP link. Then also, if you don't want to supply a with this link, 
yeah, you can supply with that link and you, you, she, you can say to her, you can see all your RSVPs here and manage your RSVPs. If you don't want to supply her with that link, you can every time she phones and say, how many people are coming to my wedding? You can go to the booking and mail her the attendees list. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm on different pages here now. So you can mail her the attendees list just by clicking. But I always say to venues, you don't want the bride on your neck the whole time, how many people are coming, or conference organizer. Just send them that link. They can manage their own RSVPs and see their own RSVPs. If it, it was a event ticket on you, you can remail the event ticket. And like I showed you, you can mail her the function sheet to be completed. Okay. Uh, So for now, I'm just going to um, delete this booking for now. Any questions in this booking applications, what you can do? Um, what was the one question I had? Do you have to put delete there in the description? And I know the status, yeah, by where it says status, you can change to deleted, but do you also have to say deleted in the event description? Mm -mm. Okay. I'll just do it for our purposes so that they know it's us that logged in. Otherwise, maybe Yaku is going to look for the 60,000 rand at the end of the month. <laughs> So we always just put it in as reference training. That's why we deleted it. Okay. Yeah. And then um, another question is, say like we had any specials or anything, um, how do we send that like sort of like a mass email? Okay, but yeah, but that is not in yet. That is part of the admin training. So oh, is, sorry, what sorry. I'm asking, anything in this booking, is there any questions or uncertainty that you've still got? No. Because I want to move on for no, the next hour to group bookings. And if, if I move on and you don't understand anything in this group booking, then it's going to become very confusing to you. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, I, I, at the moment, I don't have any questions. I sort of understand everything, yeah. why, why it's there and why we have to do it and how to do it. Yeah, okay. So this is new functionality. We did offer a training session already on it, a free training session. <laughs> but I don't think Tony um, joined the session. But you can now use this groups. And you say create a new group. And your first group I'm going to create is Q2P conference. And say add. So now I'm creating all of this into one group booking. And groups work like this. So I can go and I can say manage my groups. And there's the group now created. So what you can do in groups as well, I have a main organizer in the email telephone number. You can have notes and you can say guests, responsible, or own drinks. You can have notes in there. It tells you from that date to that date, and you can change the dates in here. Gives you the total, it's an open group, total of 50 guests. Uh, total are checked in, how many rooms are in the booking, and it's one reservation. You can also have a function sheet selected in the group, and it will go to the group um, manager, the one that's managing this conference, the conference coordinator, the coordinator, or wedding coordinator, or the bride can be in here. Okay, so there's my group bookings and now currently it's got only one document in here Do you see that yeah. it is on one invoice it belongs to that group i'm going to go back to the booking and i'm going to split some of those rooms okay so let's say for instance now they want to split the rooms 
that they still all part of this conference. Okay, so I'm going to split yeah. again standard room, and I say split. Ah, not move. Split, and I want to say split that room. Split. And it's now on the in own invoice, but look, it's under that group. Okay. Yes. I'm gonna leave it that way. And I'm gonna go back to this original booking and I'm gonna split another one. Split and let's take this Queen's Chamber. Split. It stays under the group and now it's got their own invoice for the group. Okay. So you would use that if the company is not going to pay for... Yeah, and for weddings. You see, there's now free yes. bookings. Now, look, if I go back to groups... So it's also to let you know that they're part of that wedding, right? Yes. Okay. Right. So there's my... There's now free. So okay. now I know all of these customers forms part of this group. So it can be a wedding group, a birthday group, a conference group, but now I can manage before they check out. I can see if I make, let's say I make this one an invoice. And it will change the colors as well for you. Partially paid. This is also invoice or they still owe money. They're still in quote status. You see how quickly it updates for you. Yes. And they're all part of this group and all the invoices part of this group is in here. So it's easy to see a wedding is if all the accounts settled before they leave, which ones are still outstanding, and then if the whole group paid all the invoices. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that makes sense. Especially if like they want to do something else other than what the company <laughs> wants. Yeah. So the function sheet you will rather manage it then from here to this group organizer. You can print it, you can complete it, and you can mail the function sheet to her, and she can complete it for the full group. Okay. Now look what you can also do under a group, is you can make a program for them. So you can say, item. you can start at one, I like to start in the tens, twenties, and thirties, and I say the time and date, so I can say 12 October 2023, 08. And I can say description, day one. And I say this is a heading, add. And then I'm going to make the next item, and I'm going to say um, 08.15. Conference welcome drinks will be served at entrance or garden, whatever your thing is for them. Okay. Then I can say 30 and I can say 09. Sorry, my typing skill this time in the afternoon is not good. So I can <laughs> say up to 10. Okay, and I can say conference. Then what do they progress? Okay. And then I can say 40. And I can say 10, 15 to 10, 30. The break with snack. And so you can build on the whole program. And then you say 10, 50, to one conference in progress. Okay. okay, and then I can say 60. You don't have to do all this work every time. I'm going to show you, you can copy from a template. So okay. I can say one o'clock to two o'clock. Lunch will be served in garden. Blah, blah, blah. And 70. I can say from two. 
two, three. Sorry for my typing skills. No, don't worry. Tea break. We have snack. But you get it, though. Yes, I get the idea. <laughs> and then 80 is free to five. Conference in progress. Okay, and let's say it's more than one day conference. Then 90, and I say 13 October 2023. 08 to 09 uh, day 2 and I make it a heading and I say add and I, I actually wanted that time in there cut and I say 100 and I say um, that time and I say breakfast will be served in royal suite, whatever you want to say. And then I can say number 11, 10 o'clock, departure of guests. Please settle your account at the reception. When handing in your keys. Okay. Add. Okay. So if you set up templates, full day conference, overnight conference, half day conference, uh, oh. wedding, three day wedding, two day wedding, weekend wedding, you can copy it from here. So you'll have templates saved here. And then you can copy it and you don't have to do all this work every time. And you can just adjust or remove items. Okay. okay. Then you can print the program for them. And every time you say heading, it creates a new header. So we can right. also probably use this program to run their day as well, right? Yes. What's going on? So you've got a program, you can give it to all your guests, you can leave it in their rooms, you can give it to them on arrival, they know who's the group contact, so they're not going to bother you, they know exactly what they're doing, what time, where they're going to have dinner, what time they must be out, and you can leave them a note for day two. Okay, perfect. Oh, so if you set it up and you start your next one, you can just copy from those templates. So you can print it, then you can mail it. So you can mail it to the group contact. You can mail it to everybody that's got invoices in this group. All three those customers with invoices. Okay. If you use the RSVP link, that's all the guests, you can mail it to all the guests. You can so add, if you make it to all the guests, wouldn't you need their details as yeah, well? Yeah, but they capture it when they they capture it when they um when they, they fill out when the, they RSVP when they register for the event. Okay, so okay, okay, yeah. so that's where they get so, the information from. Okay. Yeah, the group contact, the customers are on the invoice, and if they use the RSVP link, that's what we call guests. You can have other emails in here with a semicolon and another one. Okay. What does um, include guests if available? Um, if you use the yeah. RSVP link, that's what they're saying there. Okay. So if the guests didn't RSVP, they're not going to receive this program. Okay. So that's why they call it if available. If you don't use the RSVP link for the event, then if you tick it, it's not going to mail it to them at all. Okay. Okay. Then you can type in a subject here and say, um, welcome to Riverside, blah, blah, blah. Your weekend or conference or wedding program. You can type in a full, and you can also use those messages 
in the venue setup, all the variable fields, you'll get to know more about them. You can type up a full message in there with all variable fields. I'm just going to copy one because I'm lazy. Okay. <laughs> So okay. you can type in your own message in here and everything and then click mail and it's going to mail it to everybody with the program attached. So this will this will now say, please find it at your program for the weekend, blah, blah, blah. Not all this other mumbo jumbo. I'm just lazy to type. Yes. <laughs> Yo, I don't know why it's got all these spaces and stuff. Maybe not a good idea copying it from there. <laughs> yeah. No, so you can type up your own message and it will mail it to everybody. Okay. We have the program. I'm not going to mail it now to everybody. I will drive and you know, let's take him out. I need my to myself. So there's the program. You can print it, you can mail it, and exit. Now, if you start your next uh, group again, you can easily go there and you can copy from the other group. Yeah. So you can create I templates for weddings, conferences, etc. And then you don't have to do all this work every time. Okay. So you can, can go and create a group and you say conference template, wedding template, uh, free day conference, two day conference or half day conference program template. And you can just copy from those templates. Then it brings all those information in here and you can adjust how you want to adjust it. Okay. Then you don't have to do all this work every time. So you can do a program yes, for them. Yeah. yeah, you can have a room list ready for all your guests. So there's all the rooms that's on the bookings. And you can have guest names in here as well. So Yanni and Sunny both are sleeping in this room. So if they provide you with a room list, or guest names is going to sleep in the room list. And let's say Pete Pompis and partner is going to sleep in this room. And there's your room list. You can add all the room names of all the guests. You can print the room list. So when they arrived, the people know already. You see why I say you can't, you can't have your check-in time as your room name. Yes. I don't know why he's done that. It's horrible. But <laughs> But then when they arrive, you you already have a room list and you say, oh, Yanni, Sunny, you are sleeping in room three. Go. Okay. So it creates a room list. You can also print it. You can export it to Excel as well. Okay. That so creates a room list for you. You can also send everybody messages. So you can say, for my group, Contact, include all the customers, and include all the guests. Email them. I don't think you have the SMS integration. I don't think so. You can include yeah. other messages. Yeah. yeah, and you can say directions to Riverside or roadworks planning, blah, blah, blah. And once again, you can paste the whole message in there and mail all of them your message. So you can communicate with all your customers in this group, your group contact, if you want to communicate with them immediately and send them messages. Okay. Okay. That makes okay. it nice. Let's say, for instance, there's road works in Graham Road, and all of a sudden they can't use that road. How are you going to notify all those guests not to use Graham Road? Okay, sit and phone them and mail them one by one. Yes, that would most likely be. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you can communicate with all of them at once. Okay. Okay, nice. So, you can send them, a, create a program, 
print the room list and message all of them all at once. And you can see, now let's say for instance, there's another booking that forms part of this group. You can easily add them here. And you can search by them from date. You can search on that date and it brings up all the dates and the bookings that doesn't form part of that, um, of this group. Okay. And then I can add that one now. So you can search by date, you can search by customer name, and then add this one as well to the booking. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm going to mark this as completed for now. But it will always be available. So okay. if I go again to groups and I say filter, which is my open ones and which is my completed ones, it will always be there to go back for you to just have a reference on it. Okay. Okay. Let me just type off all these, otherwise, Tony is going to be so confused. If he's working today, is he working? No, today? he's not working today. Oh, oh. No, not today. <laughs> uh, so group bookings will just make your life so much easier to manage weddings, big group bookings, birthday parties, you know, and they all pay their own invoice and you still want to keep them under that group. It will just be easier to manage them. Okay. Okay, so the reservation list. Um, I'm going to carry on now with the reservation list. So the reservation list, that's your booking ID. It's a unique number the system creates. And this is a numerical number. So they already made so many invoices and bookings in Q2B. That's the date from the client is checking in. That's the title, the event description, the last name. And if you keep um, it there, it will show you the first name. You see how this is also not very acceptable for us because a customer's last name is not a little strike. Yes. <laughs> then how many guests are in the group? The company, if there's a company, who's the coordinator? There's the status. What is the status of it? Then you can copy as well. But please be careful of this copy function. If you copy it, it will make another invoice for this person for the same amount, just with a new invoice number. Okay. This is the date it was created, and these little envelopes just show did the system send the quote or did the system send the invoice. And these little bars here, you can scroll up and down with it. Uh, so if there's a little invoice here, a little envelope, it shows the quote was mailed, the invoice was mailed. Okay. <laughs> if you want to go by date, you can scroll by date. You can see there's still old bookings here that he also didn't remove from the system yet. Okay, and he's got up to 2025 bookings. So this search function you can use to search with any of these fields. So, okay. You see, this is a typical, there's Nadine Skuman. This was a typical group booking that he could have done under groups and it will show then it forms part of a group. Okay. okay. Then um, on the reservation list, so you can enter the booking by clicking on the booking ID. Okay. He's sending that horrible function sheet to guess. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, so you can enter, you know, these fields, what it's all about, eh? Yes. Is there any questions on these fields? No, 
Uh, and you can use that filter because you don't want to filter and look through 2,908 bookings. You want to filter maybe only your own and it will bring up Leanne. You want to maybe go by surname and you can search by surname. You want to maybe go by the event title, 18th birthday, you can go by the event title. That's great. I've been just using the ID <laughs> so far. To okay, search so all of any of ID. these columns you can search by. So that's why if you elaborate your um, and make your title a little bit better to say photo shoot for Sunny and Yanni, it's going to be much easier to find your bookings. Year in function for this company, it's going to make your um, search function much easier. Yes. Okay. Okay, I just want to take a sip of water. Me too. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so there's a few hiccups in, in how he's managing it, but you can see it as well. You can see what the possibility is. Okay. Yes, I can. Okay, so the legend is just the colors. What does it represent? Gray is quote, pink is partially paid, green is paid, unpaid, completed paid. So all the fully paid ones that's green, he must actually go and move to complete it. So this booking is completed, it's invoiced and fully paid. But you can clearly see on the colors, he doesn't yeah. do it. Okay. Okay. So, um, how would you change the colors to completely paid? I will show. I will show you in the mass completion. Um, I, you can do it one by one, but if you don't want to do it one by one, you can do it in mass complete. But okay. let if you can do it in a booking, and you can say it's not an invoice anymore. It's already in the past 2021 and he should have done this completed and put it under completed okay. status okay 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 i get that because i even actually had that question i wanted to know why it was so red on one of my bookings i was i didn't know and then yeah and you see why you see how long it takes to open up because there's 2980 entries lying here since 2018, that should have been, the quotes have, should have been removed already and the invoices should have been, have payments captured in them. Do you see that? Yes. And then also, um, if the quote didn't happen, you should have taken it off the system. There is an invoice fully paid, this should be in completed status. Okay. Okay. So you can make this reservation list works much better, much faster for you guys. And that's why it's taking so long to open up every time. Okay. Okay. So you can also print, export, but nobody uses this actually. But if you want to, you can export the details. The filters, it will always start on quotes and invoices and pro formas. It's active bookings. If I want to see all the inquiries in the system, if I want to see all the quotes. And once again, you can see there's very, very old quotes still lying here. So yeah. all these quotes were supposed to be moved to something else, either invoice or deleted status or completed status. Okay, so obviously that's, Obviously, the customer is saying, OK, we're not going to go ahead with the party. Then you just have to click on delete it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. You can see it's been lying here uh, since 2020. Okay. <laughs> so it yeah. should have been off the reservation list and under completed or deleted status. OK. okay so if I want to see all the invoices currently. That's why it's taking so long. He's creating a lot of work for 
in Salvinia. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if he knows that. <laughs> no. <laughs> and he loves Q to be. I would hate Q to be if I run it this way. Yeah. I'm I'm telling you, I, it's the wrong the way you guys are working currently. Okay, so there's all my invoices. And you can see all those green ones could have been moved to completed status already. Then you can see also if I want to see the completed bookings. Okay, and there's one still with amount outstanding, etc. Oh, so you used to do it. Why did you stop? Yeah. I see. Only from 2022, 2023. Maybe there's a reason why he's keeping the old ones there, but this once he did it and then he stopped yeah that's what i was wondering because i've seen all the colors the green the red yeah uh, i've seen the orange before until now to be honest i didn't know the orange existed <laughs> <laughs> and on filters you can also see what's in the past and then still due money is outstanding it's in the past already In the past, money outstanding. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't. The booking was made and there's still money's outstanding in it. So the booking was created on the third, but there's still money's outstanding on it. Oh, okay. 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 Then um, deleted bookings. Okay. It will always stay on here. It will never be removed from here. Okay. Then on the waitlist, if there's somebody on the waitlist who's coming in today, who's going out today, and if you use the vouchers, you can say hide the vouchers from my reservation list. Also to make your reservation list quicker and faster. But, okay. okay. So there's a little bit of work for us here. Um, do you have a good relationship with Tony? Yes, so I think I do. <laughs> I ask think I have Tony, a good relationship with everyone. <laughs> yeah. Ask, please ask Tony if we can clean up the reservation list for him from at least 2021 to 2020, and just clean it up for him. Will you do that? From and then I will, yeah, 18 from 2021 going backwards. We can do 2022 as well if he wants to, just so that you guys can work faster, really. Okay, so we can clear from 2021 backwards. It's never going to be off the system. The ones that's fully paid, I'm going to move them to completed status. And the old quotes from 2018, 2019, 2020, I'm just going to move to deleted status. But you will always be able to find them again in here. Okay, so we're just going to change the statuses, right? Yes, Basically. it's never been, the, it's never going to be deleted. I'm just going to change these statuses to make your active list quicker and faster. Okay. Okay. So if you can get that from him, then we can help you guys to work better. Okay. Well. Okay. So now um, I'm going to carry on and I'm going to show you accommodation. So you've only got these rooms set up currently, but I don't think he set it up properly. Yeah. Generally, I don't do accommodation, but. You can show me anyway, because I would like to know. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually have zero experience on this. I've seen it when I've clicked on it by mistake, but I actually don't know exactly what's going on with it. Mm. Yo, there's a lot of problems in the venue setup here. You see, he's got a lot of accommodation set up here in categories. Okay. Yes. But when I click on your rooms and say show all, not all the rooms are there. Oh, also he didn't select this. Yeah, it's a big, this is a big problem. That's why your rooms are not working properly. 
Mm. Okay, there's now rights generated for the rooms. So if there was rights generated for the rooms, I'm just going to change it to categories for now, because that's the correct way. Tony should have also done this training, I'm telling you. Has he not done it? Right in the beginning, but clearly you can see he did his own thing and he didn't keep up with the changes and the new development. Okay. Right. So unfortunately, there's no rooms. That's why you have to add a right every time you try to book a room. Okay. Yeah, if there was rights in, it would have shown the standard default right in here. Yeah. Okay. So this screen, you can start at the date. Let's say I'm looking for place for the 27th. Let's say I'm looking for a honeymoon chamber. And uh, this right. Check availability. See, there's no rooms under the categories. Do you see what I mean? And if you choose our tents, I just want to see that. So these are the only overnight places he's got. Room one, two, and four. And uh, does in our tents, with our tents at accommodation, our luxury tents maybe? Nothing. Oh. Okay. Hmm. So how you guys book it out? I don't know. These are the only overnight rooms you've got. Um, I was wondering how does he book out our tents as well? Yeah. Um, well, there's a lot of problems in the system here, my sweetie. Because um, these are the only overnight rooms that the system can pick up for you. Oh, okay. So, so you're supposed okay. to come here and then select the nights you want. So yes. check out how many guests and it should calculate the rates for you. And there's nothing. So, so there isn't a way. So how does he book out a... Okay, I can sort of understand how he books out a... He, like books, it at ma yeah, I, he books it manually. So he's... He, Clicks on it and then he adds his own rights in there. Okay. Okay, and there's your rack right now on the top and there's all your companies. Okay. So even from this monthly accommodation screen, that's the only accommodation you're showing in the system at the moment. Okay, so... Uh, how does he do the tents though? <laughs> I don't know. Is it, is it done differently? I, I don't think, understand. I think he puts a he, he just puts a line in there. But but if it was a room, the system will pick it up as an overnight room. So let's check here. Okay. So there's the chambers. All these things are inactive, marked inactive. So how does he know if it's booked? Oh, my. Mm. Okay, so they've only got one, two, three, four, five rooms, and all these are inactive. Okay. Go. Okay. Uh. So is that, I have no idea. I can't. It's. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, then how, hmm. Yeah. So then how does he know which tents what? <laughs> and there's no rights in there. You can see when I go there and I select these two nights and I go yeah. there, if I was rights in, it would calculate the rights in your, the minute I say how many guests are in the room. So how does he do it manually? So he goes next, then he goes here. Or like we added the room. Yes. And then he goes here and he says pay later and he edits. Long way around. And then he comes here and then he gives it a right. And does he do that the same with the tents or because the tents are inactive, it's not No, possible. he marked the tents inactive now. 
So this is how he does it. It's a very long way around. The right could have been in there for already. You understand what I'm saying? Then you don't have to do all that work going around trying to book a room. Yeah, I understand that. I was just curious how he does it with the tents then as well if they're inactive. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, unanswered question there. <laughs> Mm -hmm. okay. So this is actually how you can start booking out the rooms. Remember what we did? We started from this calendar and then you can add. So if you want to manually add, but I'm sorry, but it's a very, very long way around to work like that. Much easier way on Q2B to work. So that he does it this way. So he starts from the main calendar then he comes here add a resource, a room or activity, and then he says chamber, and then he chooses the room, and now he's got to put in one, two adults, and now he's got to put in a right, because the rights are not in the system, click on flat right, save. Mm. It's it's a very long way around the book. Yeah. A lot of effort. You could have started here. Select all the rooms that you want. Next. And there's all the rooms. One. One sleeping, two is sleeping in there, one is sleeping in there, one is sleeping in there. And it would have calculated the rights. Okay. 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 You don't have activities, so we're not going to spend time on activities. You don't do tickets. Uh, you don't have any link, I think. Tickets. It's a voucher. Okay. Okay, yeah, so you have links of Kama France. So you can book accommodation with Comma France from Venue Link. You can check, see their real-time availability and their rate. Okay. See. Okay. And you can book for Comma France. And I can see that you booked that room. Okay. Okay. And that happens through Venue Link. And you linked with, this is our demo site. And you were linked with Riverside Bush Baby. That's where your things are from as well. Yes. So does that mean he does the bookings from there? Yeah. So I think that is how he did the bookings. But what um, Jacques, I think his name is, he cancelled his subscriptions with us. Oh, okay. But, so I don't know what's going on there and why they're not communicating with each other anymore. But I know he cancelled. He's going off on the 15th of October. Okay. So this is probably how Tony saw his real-time availability and booked out these tents. Okay. 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 But I don't know what's, what's going on. But you still linked with Cover France, Child Welfare. So does that mean we're not in a, um, we don't share tents anymore? I'm not board. sure what's going on. We, I, our accounts department just sent me a cancellation letter from Jacques. Okay. And we never ask why. If he's just say, fine, if you don't want to use good to be anymore, no problem. I don't know what's the situation about that. Okay. okay. So that is how you can do venue link bookings. This is your online link that you guys clearly don't use. For guests to book their own rooms. Chapel is not an overnight room. Fairy Woods is not an overnight room. So it's got them all linked to overnight rooms and it's incorrect. Okay. Okay, so that's also a big problem, which we will be able to fix in the venue setup. But Tony needs to know about it. I'm going to fix these things because this is not how you book a chapel. Okay. Right, this is for overnight rooms. Then all availability is also going to be a shambles. Okay, so there he's got the chapel. 
and he's got fairy woods, honeymoon chambers, main reception, standard rooms, and summer kitchen. You can use this all availability to see, to book out places. So let's say I want to book out the chapel for that day. Create a reservation. How many guests do? Okay, from that date. But you see there's no rates in. Yes. So he does everything manually, to be honest. Okay. I wonder what his reasons for that is. I don't know. Mm. Because the minute I put in there two guests, it should calculate your rate. I don't know, because you can also easily book it from here. And you can also change your rates as well as you go along, yeah. right? So then you can't finish because then it's going to send the invoice with zeros in. Now you have to click on edit, which is a lot of work. And then now you have to come and put the rates in. Yeah, then I don't know why he does it because if you can update the rates as you go along, like why would you yes. do it manually? Okay, and the chapel is got set up as an overnight room. And you can't book it that way. Okay. Okay. So there's quite a few issues on it. I like this screen, the all availability, because I can see all my resources here. I can see which ones are overnight. I can see the rates if there's rates in. <laughs> <laughs> I can see stay requirements, minimum of two nights maybe. I can also generate rates from here. So I can take that standard room A and I can say for my rack rate from this date to that date. And you can see the room is not set up properly. Yeah. The animal chambers from that date to that date, I want to generate the rate up to there, and it's 1250 per night. And as I add, the rate will immediately generate. Okay. So you can update it. So. Yeah, so there's a few issues uh, in the system. Um, how many rooms do you have under this category? Um, how many of your own rooms do you have? You've got the castle chambers, that's the honeymoon suite. Um, the castle chambers is actually going to change. We're planning, we don't actually really sell it unless we have to. We're going to uh, we have plans for it, but the new honeymoon suite is actually called the Queen's Chambers. And then we have, but then also I've seen when we had uh, your standard room and then, well, room one, room two, and then there was a room, I think room four. And I yeah, asked him what that yeah, was, and he yeah. said it's the Queen's Chambers. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, standard room four. I asked him, okay, where does that come from? Because I only know of we have one, um, the two bottom rooms, the two standard bottom rooms there underneath the Queen's Chambers. And he says it's the Queen's Chambers. So, yeah, so I don't know. Double bookings. And they also, you can see there's no category for them. They're not linked to a category, so they're lying here. Okay. So, Seriously, I don't know how he books it. I would struggle. I, I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> and we can have yeah. a whole lot of other new rooms to add to it as well. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it up to you to speak to Tony and say, can we fix these things in their venue setup as we go along? 
because these rules should be under a category. Okay. That one should be under a category. Yeah, because I would like to know. It would have been nice if he was your as well to like hear why he did that, if there is a reason. Yeah, for reason it. why he's doing it this way. Yeah. Because I'd hate to change it and there is like a reason why. <laughs> yeah. But let's say, for instance, now you see there's a bookie here, booking here yes. for this person. If you want to go into the booking, you can click on it. Say, so do you want to edit, mail, print it, or check the customer in? Okay. If I want to go into the booking, edit, and it takes me into the booking. Okay. Okay. So I like this screen. This is our new, where you can see everything that's booked. You can see the rate that you're booking at. Um, and I can see a lot of issues here in your venue set up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so let's end it for the day here, yeah? but I want Tony to send me a mail. If you can put it in writing and say we see a few issues here on the rooms and categories and in the venue setup, can we please fix it while we're doing this training? And then I want him to respond in writing to say yes we can and then we'll fix it for him. Very nice. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so the problems are with the rooms, the categories. And the rights. If you can rights. give us the room rights, then we can generate the rights for him. And then you guys don't have to manually enter a right every time. Okay. If he's got separate rights for weddings, conference, and stuff like that, He's welcome to create three different right categories. Then you'll come here and you'll have a, a standard right, wedding right, conference right. And we can generate those for you guys. If you're booking at the conference right, it will immediately pick up the right. At the wedding right, it will immediately pick up the wedding right. At a standard, I hate rack right. It's so old school. Um, they call it the standard right. If it's on the standard right, you can pick up the standard right. Okay. I want him, yeah, to respond in, uh, if we can fix the problems I can see in the venue setup in writing and then also the rights and then also um, uh, what else was the issue? Um, The rights for the rooms, the resource the categories. Uh, help me think here, Leanne. The, all of those in oh, the right categories. I'll create right categories. It will just change your life completely. Yeah. Let me just show while we're online. Let right. me just quickly show you my demo. Okay. And everybody plays on it, so it's not even done. 100%. Okay. But this is how your life can change. So if I come here and I want to book a room, I can go, what is all you can see here? And I say, I want to see all my luxury rooms. All my luxury rooms open up and I want to book my bed and breakfast right. And I go, boom. There is a minimum stay of two nights for that room. And I go boom. And I say next. And I say there. And there's my child rights. There. And I say next. See, my rights are in already. You see it? Yes. yes. And I say boom, boom. Finish, done, and book that the correct right. So this is, if you open up the rooms, all your rooms should be here under the correct category. If you um, if you book at the bed only right, full board right, wedding right, conference right, it should be here and it swaps immediately. If I can show you on the screen, if I go to that right, 
check availability, it will go to that rate. If I go to that rate, it will go to that rate. If I want to book at this rate, I will get that rate. If I want to book at full board, so you can have different rate categories. Okay. 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 Let me just help you guys to set it up so it's easier for your users to use it because it's really, really set up and managed in a complicated way now, to be honest. Do you think, do you think it does that? Because, to be honest, it's not like we're a hotel. So... Mm. We only book the rooms out if there's a wedding or if or it's a function birthday, that wants to It can sleep still over. be much easier that you don't have to go and put a manual rate in there. But when. So you can have a rate, when, when you, you can have a standard thing. rate, you can have a wedding rate, you can have a conference rate. Yes. And once you select it, look, if I go now and I say show my rates. I'm on bed only, ne? and I say, show my rights in bed and breakfast. Then it swaps over to bed and breakfast rights. Mm -hmm. So you'll have standard right, conference right, wedding right. But sometimes our wedding rates are different because um, I th it's more itemized. So I would say like, if I had to create a quote from my head, we'd say, okay, chapel, you'd have your main reception, then we'd say um, basic decor, your DJ. Um, yeah, but I'm talking now your about, drinks, your yeah, I'm talking only about rooms now. This yes, I know, but um, the rooms would only show, would show on the quotes because it's a wedding, if that makes sense. Yeah, but what I'm saying is your room rates are not in now. So if I go and book a room now, I have to go to the booking and then add a rate in for the for the room for the night. Okay. Or do you sell a package That's, and all the rooms are included? It, add well, a zero. If you go to a quote, um, I just want to show you. Tell me which quote I can look at. Um... Okay, go in and then I'll just point the quote. I'll tell you the quote number. Let me go in. Okay, you can. Okay, go to this one, the Kukumur one. Uh, the other thing I wanted in writing is that we can clear this old reservation list at least up until the end of 2021 for you. Yes. Okay, what's the booking number? Um, can you go to, it's right, the, just go to the second one, it's 711032, yes, the Kukumur. Oh. Okay, so if you go, if you click on, just say the chapel. This one. Yes. So generally, you know the price, this item. We'd type in that, and that automatically would bring up our rates. Yes. So that's from there. But that's what I'm saying. The rates I'm talking about is a room rate, an overnight room rate. So if I book this overnight room, there's no rates generated. He types in the rate, click on flat rate, but he's got to go and do it every time. Oh. Well, I don't know, because when I do... Okay, so go to create. I just want to show you something. Okay, and then say Queen's Chambers. From the price list. Yeah, from the price list. Um, just say Queen's. Okay, you can go down there, click on it, and then it already brings up the rates, and then you have to put in yeah, obviously a, one or two. Yeah, but so that would be easier if we did that it. Is, yeah, but that is a price list item. It's yes. just on a price list. It didn't book out the room. The room is still available. It's but a price list item here. Yeah. Yes, because wouldn't it still be a price list item because they haven't accepted the quote or haven't paid for it? Okay, this one they have paid for, but generally when we send the quotes out, we'll do it like that. 
and then and once then they've paid their the booking room, fee, then. then we go back onto the quote and, and we go to the resource room. room. Yo. Yes. Well, that's generally how I've been doing it. So if they have made their booking fee, then I go and I like I go into that and add the resource and say, okay, Queen's no. Chambers, and that's how the resource from two is filled out in. Yeah. And this, this as well, your resource name is only this, Queen's Chamber Room Free. This part should be under this description. Yes. Okay. The, okay. The, your resource is only your room name or room, room number. Okay. You should have all this detail in this description here. Not in a resource. Yes. Yeah, so he does it the very long way around, but I understand where you do a quote, you do it from the price list item because there's no room yet booked. Okay? Um, yes, and then you go and add a room. But if I go and I go and I say create, and I say mm -hmm. queens, and I want to add this room now. Now I have to find it. Okay, and I say queen room, but then I then now I have to manipulate this if I want to. If it was in the room, it will immediately pick up the, which right are you booking at. So okay. just ask him about that. If he doesn't want it and he wants to do it the long way around, he's welcome to do it the long way around. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll ask him why he does it this way. If there's a reason. Yeah. I can't answer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and explain it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So there's a few things that you need to ask him, and then I'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Yes. Thanks so much, Andrew. I'm going to stop the recording, and then once it's downloaded, I load it up 